Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Wednesday catch-up video. On Sunday, I was a steam rally at Flukborough, Cumbria, Green River Sands. It was a really good rally. The weather was good. We had two excellent days. There was a lot of viewers coming to say hello, uh, shook me hands, and we had a good bit crack together. Last week, or the week before last, there was one of my old, my long-standing viewers, a lad called Donald, mentioned that he's a member of Men in Sheds. No men in sheds or sort of people like me, I suppose, who haven't got their own shed. So they pull together and they do various projects. Um, have a look on Facebook. That's, it's an interesting group. And what happens quite often is um, widows donate tools and pieces of equipment from sadly deceased model engineers, engineers, poor DIY guys, and they end up with lots of things that they're not sure what to do with. One of the things they had donated was a set of match plates, I say patterns, for a model beam engine, which was designed by E.T. Westbury. Um, that lad Don brought them across to Flukborough, and I brought them home, and I want to show you them now, and have a little bit talk about them. Then I'm going to put another part of the lathe tutorial on, follow on from last week with the fixed study. We're going to be doing a travelling study. This is the box of patterns. They've all been very nicely made. There's a full set of patterns here to build this beam engine. Match plate patterns. I've never cast using match plates before, but I'm definitely going to have a go at casting one or two of these various parts. Probably the flower wheel, I'd like to do that. Now in this box that is some finished castings. That's the size of the beam. This is really too small for the sort of engineering I do. I bring you that box, there's another box with some stuff in that's even more interesting than this. Right, this is the second box. The first thing I found was this book. It's actually a handwritten book, a handmade book, all the drones in. It tells you how to use the patterns, how to do casting, detailed drones, how to make all the parts for this beam engine. I've started reading it, it really is good. There's a lot of time and effort went into this book. Also in this box is a full set of jigs and fixtures for making the engine. All your bits and pieces, jig blocks, things built under here to make the engine. I won't be making the engine, as I've said, it's too small for me. All this stuff really wants to go to an engineering global society where members can share it. Even the museum, it is that good. He's even made the boxes to hold the parts. I'm not quite sure what that's for, but it's been hot. Beam engine G3. It'll really hold something when it gets to that. Honestly, it is an amazing, an amazing find, really. Um, it was going to go in a skip. Stuff like this corn going to skips, stuff like this gonna be it's gonna be kept as a man's sort of life in here really. There's fine thread, nuts and bolts. I haven't been right through it. Um like I say, I really need to find a home for this where it will be will be used. So if anybody knows anybody, uh normal email, get in touch. It would be great to hear from somebody that can actually use this to its full potential. I don't want money for it. It didn't cost me anything. You don't sell things that you've had given. But I really want to see it going to a good home. Hi, my name's John. Welcome to part 13 in a series of short videos all about the metal turning lathe. In this one, I'm going to follow on from the last episode where we did the fixed steady and I'm going to demonstrate and discuss the travelling steady. This is the travelling steady that come with me, Harrison 140 lathe. It's got two brass contact tips or two brass fingers. The steady is bolted onto the saddle there and it moves back and forth with the saddle. That's why it's called a travelling steady. Travelling steadies are used for machining long, thin pieces of metal. I'm going to put a long thin piece of metal in the lathe and show you what happens if you don't have a steady on the problems you run into. I'm 
I'm going to face here the ball and centre drill it. I'm using the coloured chuck so I know it's going to be nice and accurate at this end. The coloured chuck is very good. That's a piece of 60 mil round bar and with just gentle hand pressure I can bend that in and out 20 or 30 thou, no problem at all. If you're a machine this the way it was, start from that end, up to that end, what would happen is it would machine to the right side at that end and then the tool would push the bar away and up and you'll get a big hump in the middle. So it would be on sides at each end, a gradual taper up in the middle, down to that end. That's what happens, I know it happens, I've done it. So to prevent that from happening, we put a steady rest on here, which keeps that bar from pushing away and up. Because when the tool is in there, I'll bring the camera in so you can see better. When you bring a tool in, it pushes the bar away from it, and then when you try and cut, it also lifts the bar up in the air. To prevent this happening, we'll fit a steady rest. Right, so the steady rest is fastened onto the carriage so it moves back and forwards. It doesn't move in and out, obviously it's, it's fixed there. There's two ways of doing this. You can have the steady rest in front of the tool or the steady rest behind the tool. This is decent material so I'll be putting the steady rest in front of the tool. Bearing in mind that whatever imperfections are in here will be transmitted to the tool by the steady rest. So if this material was rough you would machine a little bit on that side and put the steady rest on there, then it would follow, it would be trailing instead of advancing. Right, these are straightforward brass or bronze pads, and you just adjust them up until they're just touching the just touching the workpiece. Like that. And what some people do is they run the lathe and it polishes a little bit of the brass to make it a nice fit on the workpiece. So I'll start the lathe up, we'll put some oil on and we'll just nip these up and gently set them in. Again a little bit closer. Right. You can see the two pads there, I'm just going to put a little bit of lubricant on. Just snug them up nice, not too much, just enough. Right, I'm going to put a light cut on, and I'm using the, the tool that we made in one of the first videos, high speed seal tool, because I can run this a lot slower than I can a carbide tool and still get a good finish. Move the whole setup along to the centre of the shaft, and you can see it's still machining quite nicely. Right, so I'm going to stop it there, 
and for the purpose of the demonstration I'm going to back off the steady rest so I no longer support the workpiece and then I'm going to start it up again. It's still cutting but I don't think it'll be cutting to the full depth it was with a steady there. But I can see the difference, so if we measure it, where the steady was. There's eight thou difference, but that down there and that down there, because that's been getting pushed away from the tool, and the steady hasn't been able to hold it in position. I'm going to change the tool so I can get a better finish on that. I don't know what sort of steel that is sort of steel you get given it comes out of a skip somewhere which I'm favourite tool and so we'll just ease in once again until I just touch it and just this so the tool once again is behind the pads if it is there Put the same depth of cut on. And that's putting a better finish on, it's cutting a lot better. Right now that we've got a little bit of shaft machined, I'm going to move the steady rest behind it. So the steady rest will be behind the cutting tool. So we need to adjust the little pads down now until they touch the new diameter. Is your machine and you have to keep adjusting these and eventually they will settle in. The ideal example is cutting long screw threads. Um, you, you just can't do it without the steady rest. Right. If we start the rail up again. A little bit of lubricant. And we'll go in. We're just touching. So now the steady is behind the tool. So if the bar was straight out around, it will be going onto a machine part, which hopefully is round. And so there you can see the, the two pads are behind the, the tool running on the piece of work we've just machined. Right, I've set the steady rest up so the pads are directly behind the tool I put a screw cutting tool in and I've set it to cut a 3mm pitch thread. Now the outside diameter of the bar isn't going to be reduced so it can leave the steady rest in line with the tool. Right, so we we'll engage the lead screw. See it's cutting a nice coarse thread. And 
you stay your rest just following it all the way down. This coming weekend, I'm at a steam rally at Gloucestershire. Um, my friend Rob from Extreme Plasma has kindly invited the wife and I down there for three days, sort of Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So if you're at the Gloucestershire steam rally, please come and say hello. Please come and shake your hand. Really, I do invite. I'm looking forward to going because I have a chance to see some engines and some stuff there that I don't normally see. Anyway, once again, just time to see you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. A massive thanks for all the well wishes, emails, letters, uh, phone calls even from viewers. Um, it has made a massive difference to support me, to help me through the last sort of couple of months. Um, anyway, thanks for watching.